Okay, that is his. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, what's going on? Uh, we got uh, Upper Room Ministries, STL, in the house. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, some of the things that got going on around here. You know, uh, we got Bishop Everett James. What's Amen. going on? Amen. Well, what's up, bro? Thank you for inviting me today. Um, basically, Upper Room Ministries, STL, is primarily designed to support the homeless. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when it first came to mind, I had an opportunity to team up with Larry Rice. Mm -hmm. They took their building from downtown, mm -hmm. but the Larry Rice, his people are still down there ministering and feeding the homeless. And when I uh, hooked up with them, the first time when I ran into them, they were giving them cold sandwiches. Mm -hmm. So uh, my wife and I and a couple other people that's working with the ministry, we wanted to bring them hot meals. Right. So what we do is uh, we try to do it at least two or three times a month. We go down to the church that we have leased to use, mm -hmm. and we make hot meals. Okay. We... Uh, put them in styrofoam plates, package them with bags. We give them a, a dessert, you know, cookies or something like that. We provide them with a soda and water. Okay. And, uh, and now uh, what we try to do is have uh, two different menus. Okay. So that uh, the first thing uh, that I dealt with down there was one fella said, man, I don't eat pork. You know, and I said, okay, well, you know, I don't know what else you're going to eat today, but I said, you don't have to worry about that. We got chicken. We got chicken and pork, so you can right. choose which ones you want. And we have a main dish like potatoes or rice or something to go with that. Okay. And we also serve vegetables. Okay. Uh, so that's the primary focus of the ministry. And then the other part of the ministry is I teamed up with uh, Dr. Dorothy Hooks okay. in Florida. Okay. She has a PhD in psychology, and she's also... Uh, expert on domestic violence and she teaches a lot of classes on domestic violence so what we're doing if we're going to be doing seminars live seminars mm -hmm. and at times we have guests come in and uh you know, tell us their story and you know the type of abuse that they've been through and we try to uh, help them uh find the help that they need or sometimes dr hooks dorothy hooks she would just tell them about her experiences. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Dr. Hooks, when I said she's an expert, not only is she trained and she has the academic credentials, but she was a survivor of domestic violence herself. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, once you tune in and listen to her, you uh, really learn about her story. But, you know, she had been in seven abusive marriages, mm -hmm. whereas... She was abused by each one of them, mm. each one of her husbands. But the thing is, what's really common to domestic violence is that women and men mm. can be victims of domestic violence. But what's really common uh, in domestic violence is that usually when they get out of one relationship, they rush and get into another relationship mm. before they had time to really get over the first one. Right. before they even get counseling or something which they need and dr hook she provides counseling she's a good counselor, mm -hmm. and they just hop into another relationship and this is something she was doing this was a pattern you know she get out of one marriage and before you know it she's married again mm -hmm. and see the thing is is that uh what we need to realize is that uh most of the time if you rush into a relationship or rush into a marriage you haven't had enough time spent with you have to heal, but you also haven't uh, given it enough time to really learn this person you're into a relationship with because you're rushing into another one. Yeah. And there's something about it, you know, it normally goes back to childhood where they had an abusive father mm. or abusive mother or whatever, and this learned behavior. And a lot of times uh, what happens with young women and young men or whatever, when they get into these relationships, they think it's normal to be in an abusive relationship because this is something they've seen growing up, mm. growing up with their parents or whatever. So uh, Dr. Hooks is a, like I said, she has a, a PhD in counseling mm. and she kind of counsel women and kind of help them along to get over 
their past. Right. And the thing is, they carry that baggage with them from one relationship so, to the next. So, right. so they got to learn how to get rid of that baggage. Right. So that's what we're focusing on right now. It's just domestic violence and uh, trying to help homeless people. And in the future, what I'm looking at, I'm trying to get some grants and stuff, but I would like to open up also a shelter mm -hmm. to help give some of the people off the streets. Done a little research and the research has uh, revealed to me that St. Louis has between 1,500 and over 2,000 people that are homeless that are not in the shelter, but are living somewhere on the streets in St. Louis and St. Louis County. Mm. That's a lot of people. Sure. Uh, you find some of them, uh, even in the wintertime, you know, I mean, like in the summertime, I would see them sleeping on the steps of City Hall. Mm. But they'd be out there in January and February sleeping on the steps. And sometimes these are whole families. These are not just a single man or a single woman. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it'd be a, a, a man and his wife and the children or it'd be a, a mother and her children mm -hmm. with no place to stay. And I just think that's a sad thing. Sure so uh, my prayer is that we'd be able to get the resources, be able to provide somewhere for these people to stay. Mm -hmm. That yeah. basically sums it up. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, uh, that's, that's horrible. Uh, you know, uh, well, you know, like I said, they, they got this, this, this big change, yeah, yeah, and you know, I I, I was heard something uh, that they spoke and passed the law. You know, uh, if they catch the homeless on the street, they're gonna give them a violation or something. You know, just by being homeless. Well, you know what they were giving them violations, and also I talked to Pastor Ray, which is. Uh, uh, Larry Rice, assistant pastor, and also the vice president of Larry Rice Ministries or New Life Evangelistic Ministries. <clears throat> yeah, he said he had been cited a couple of times and had to actually go to court what? a couple of times, you know, because of the fact that uh, he was feeding them. Yeah, he was feeding them, and you know, the police rolled up on him, gave him a citation for it. And uh, you know, we were determined and you know, discussing it with him also as well, but we just determined that we're going to keep doing what we're doing. And he says it's been a while since he's been cited and that pretty much they're giving up because what are they going to do? You're not placing the people anywhere. Yeah. So uh, yeah. someone has to step up and try to give them something to eat every now and then. Giving people citation just for helping somebody? Yeah, they do. What yeah. kind of government we got? Yeah, it's sad. The whole you situation know, is sad. And then the thing about it, like I say, uh, we ain't never seen nothing like this mm -mm. growing up. No. No, you never seen as much homelessness. It'd be a no, few, man. But now uh, I tell you, uh, you know, when I went to California back in 2018, I seen villages, mm. cardboard box villages of people living in real big cardboard boxes, and they'd be lined up just like it's a neighborhood, mm. you know. And uh, it's sad, and I think they were trying to do that here a lot too, but. Uh, the city kind of cracked down on it. So and, 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 and they was all up on the bridge. Yeah, they cracked down on it. They cracked <clears> down. I remember when it. I was out there helping out there. Yeah. Lab rice, helping the homeless, and then go out sometime, take them young folks out <clears throat> and uh, make them uh, fix sandwiches and right. feed the homeless, talk to the homeless. Matter of fact, I got a few of them on my video. Ooh, excuse me, on my handle where. Um, I had, we had went out and I let them talk to them and, you know, tell them how you become homeless, you know? Wow. Um, man. You know, there are so many stories. I, uh, so it's, I mean, some of it, you know, is that a lot of times it starts out at home. They were never really prepared to go on their own. Mm. So, uh, uh, when they get out there, they eventually lose the place because they don't know how to pay bills and things like that. And then there's other people oh, out there. Right. There are other people out there that uh, choose to be homeless. Mm. I mean, because I've seen a lot of veterans out there. And I know uh, a mm. lot of those veterans get good money. Every money goes to the bank, but they don't want to be part of any uh, type of system. So they fall off the grid by going homeless. Mm. And uh, so there are quite a few people that do it by choice. Mm. They just choose that I don't want to. I don't want to be part of the mainstream of si system of things. So I go under the grid by going out and being homeless. And then a lot of them you see them standing out and uh, at the uh, uh, interstate or standing right. on the corner as you come off. Wow, those people. And some of them you can't tell. You can't tell if some of them is really 
needing or what. You know what I'm saying? Because they done made some of them on that corner that done made it a hustle. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I went into uh, Schnooks about three weeks ago. And the brother said, hey, uh, can you help a homeless man out, please? Can you help a homeless brother out? So I said, yes, sir. I said, no problem. I went my wallet. I gave him $20. Hmm. All right. Now I went on in there and I picked up the items that I knew that I was going to need. When I came back, he had forgot that he had already hit me up. So he said, hey, brother, can you help a homeless? I said, brother, I just gave you $20, man. Yeah. I wasn't even expecting you to still be out here. Mm -hmm. So that right there let me know that this particular individual was just hustling. That's what he does. That's how he makes his money. Mm -hmm. And there are quite a few of them like that. So, yes. you know, now I can understand that you're crippled or you're really disabled and you're out there and you're asking for help. But there are some people you will see them out there time and time and time again mm -hmm. in the same corner. Or you, you'll see them on another part of town at a different corner and they're doing the same thing. That's what they're doing. They're hustling. And but I, I just tell them that, hey, you know, uh, Ain't no shortcuts in life. No. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't got no problem giving you something, but I'm right. saying ain't no shortcuts in life. No, there are no shortcuts. So ain't ain't no, no shortcuts in life called the woods. I'm quite sure we probably would have been to that shortcut. Yes, at, least at least try. At least try. And like I said, my, my, my main concern and those that work with me is that we take care of those families and those with kids and things like that. Mm -hmm. And if someone is really looking like they are genuine mm -hmm. or they are really hungry and, you know, they really need, then we want to be there for them. Right. But those that are hustling, you know, it takes a while for them not to figure out who they are. And then you kind of so, weed yeah. them out and know you're not going to do anything for them anymore. But mm -hmm. uh, I remember one time I uh, stopped and asked a fellow, I said, well, you know, I don't really have any cash on me at the time, but I can take you to this place where you can get something to eat. You know, they'd be glad to feed you. He didn't want to go. So no. And let me know he had a hustle going. Right. You know, he so showed did. He had yeah, he had a hustle going. And sometimes, you know, that's just, you know, just the way it is. So you got to deal with that, too. Right. Yeah. You know, and shoot, man, this has just been a lot of places I have seen it. They stand all around on the highway and wherever traffic going. I mean, it didn't used to be like that. No. It, it didn't used to be like this. It, it didn't used like to that. be like this at all. You know. It wasn't like that. The stuff we're seeing, and then this growing uh, thing about food. Yeah. A food shortage. Yeah. yeah. They're making it a food shortage. Yeah. Evidently, that's what's going on. Yeah, because, they're making it a food shortage. Yeah. Because, they, you know, closing you know, all these grocery stores down, you know, all that type of stuff. Don't want to see business strive, right, you know. Right. Uh, because we won them seven, we won them hundred out of that hundred and seven and some countries that was thrown up under the bus. Yeah, yeah. At the UN nation, and that's why you're seeing all of these uh, faces, foreign faces, because uh, you know they open them, open the gates and letting them in because America like it. It's, it's not owned like we used to have. No, it's a melting pot now. There's people of all nationalities, and some people are here legally, but a lot of them are here illegally. Yeah. And they're snatching up a lot of the jobs, you know, that would be, that could be given to our own citizens. And not mm -hmm. only that, if you notice, I noticed that a lot of the foreign nationals that come in uh, they can get a loan to open up businesses and yeah. things like that where some of the citizens are having a hard time getting these loans. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of things stacked against, you know, uh, so our own citizens. I mean, you know, yeah. God, now, I was concerned about the, uh, we had days that Honduras where a lot of the people are fleeing that uh, MS-13 type violence and they're trying to get out of that country. Yeah. I can understand that. Yeah, you know, the MS-13 is a, it's terrible gangs, you know, and they uh gangs? Yeah. They uh in Honduras and there's a couple of other uh countries, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of Central American, South American countries where these gangs are really attacking families and killing kids of the family well, if they don't join the gang or whatever they uh and not only that, they uh they will attack your family. You know, you know, back in the day when we were growing up uh, mothers and fathers and other family members were off limits, but uh, now 
if they can't get you to join the gang, they kill a member of your own family, you know, and that's, mm. that's a crazy thing too. So I can understand them trying to get out of those countries, you know. But the thing is, I really believe that uh, the government itself could do a better job of how they handle people that are homeless and have nowhere to go. Well, you know, we got a government over this government. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's the biggest thing right yeah. there. That government over this government is dictating this government. Right. You know, and uh hey people, I was look I was telling this one uh person, uh, hey, do you know uh what you up under? You know, what you mean? Uh you know, they were supposed to be up under New World Order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, no. Uh, Oh, well, it ain't going to affect me. I said, uh-oh. It's going to affect everybody. So wills, yeah. It's already affecting everybody. So wills. But all you got to look at <clears> is this. You got nations getting along with one another now that never did get along at all. Mm. All of a sudden now they're working together. So mm. uh, what you're probably going to end up seeing is a lot of troops from foreign countries uh out here on our streets and they usually bring them in for the purpose of control or riot control if things get really too far-fetched uh, they know that the american troops are not going to want to attack american people so they'll bring in troops from uh other foreign other countries, countries and they'll send the american troops to another country to enforce things there mm -hmm. and i remember back in the 70s i remember uh, uh richard nixon was trying to send uh, members of the 82nd Airborne, which is the United States Army, to South Africa to help them enforce the apartheid system, the party system, you know. And uh, then they figured out that American, especially the black American troops, were not going to go to Africa and fire on or do harm to, to other black people. So that's how they counted that out. Mm. But once they get the New World Order totally in place the way they want it, right. I can guarantee you there will be foreign troops patrolling our area so they can keep martial law going. Because it's going to be martial law. They're going to have to have martial law in order to control people. So it was, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Dick Gregory kept talking about that martial yeah, he law. He did talk about Louis it. Louis Farrakhan kept yeah. talking about yeah. And then, like say, even in the paper, he held up the paper and told yeah. him, said, this is what they're going to do. Yeah, He talked about the... The three billion peoples that they easily killing by giving them a shot, and mm -hmm. he talks about that, you yeah. know. So that's just a instead of instant death, it's just lingering, know, lingering. Yeah, death, you know, and I told him I'm, I'm not taking a shot. And there's there's a lot of things going on. So now you know the only thing that we can really do now is totally stay in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Stay in prayer, stay in yep. worship with the Lord, you know, spend your personal time with the Lord so the Lord can directly uh, touch your spirit or place in your spirit how right. you have to maintain. Right. Because right now, the only help that we got comes from above and that comes from God. Show himself. wills. Amen so to that. Yeah. That's, that's the main thing. It's just uh, show wills. Uh, uh, evaluate ourselves to make sure that we clean close to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's the answer right there. Right. Because all these things that are happening now, they have been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. It's just biblical prophecy. And, you know, the Bible lets us know uh, in some of the uh, prophet books of the prophets and also right. the book of Revelation and other places, the Bible let us, know, let us know that these things were going to come to pass. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the most important thing that we can do is cling to the Lord mm -hmm. and seek his guidance. And that's, how, that's the only protection, the only real so protection real. that we have. <laughs> right. So, that's basically yeah, it. as they called it, uh, 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 mm. I got it on the tip of my tongue that the word for sufficiency. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. only sufficiency. Yeah, because this worldly stuff it ain't working. No, it's not working at all. It is. Uh, matter of fact, if you were paying attention to the, on the news the other day, say the prime minister resigned over there in uh, uh, England. Well, now, she just went in office. She's only been in there forty days. What? So she already done resigned. So there's so much going on around so the world. Else? You know, she's uh, uh she just uh won the election mm. and now all of a sudden she's she turning in a resignation because Queen Elizabeth had pretty much gave her the okay once she uh won the election and installed her. 
now when the King Charles, she's ready to depart. She's getting out of there. So Whoa. there's a lot going on. It, it, it's really something else. It, it, it's something else. So real. Yeah, so. I remember when Bill Gates stepped down. Yeah. And then next thing you know, here this pandemic come. Yeah. Yeah. They run in them bunkers. They knew what time is. They knew what they was getting ready to do. They know. They know. Yeah, they, they know. knew. You know, they so. Know. Well, we're just living in a time now. Like you say, we need to cling to God and, yeah. uh, you know, because that's the only real thing we're going to have. That's the only that's real answer to anything. Show sure is. Show uh, sure is. And, you know, I'd I, I like to uh, talk about that, too, because, you know, our uh, our people are so confused when it oh, comes yes. to God because they, 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 they really don't understand. You are not worshiping a statue you're not worshiping a picture right but you're worshiping the living god and spirit and, and, of the right and, right and what what folks are are, are are saying now all the time when you talk to them now it seems like well you know uh blonde hair blue eyes well see that's not god that's not the picture of god because so no one no one had cameras when jesus was on the earth right and to be honest with you anyone that is a study of history and really study the Bible, they would know that Jesus Christ himself uh, was a person of color. Mm -hmm. And there's no doubt about that. So the thing is, is that <clears throat> when you see people worried about what color he was and all that, you just got to re uh, realize that that's the European version. Mm -hmm. But the Europeans did not know what he looked like. You know, when you go to China, you know, you see Jesus looking like a Chinese man or, or whatever. Wow. Or if you go to Africa, he looked like an African. But the thing is, no one that's here now was there on earth when Jesus was walking the earth. Right. So what we have to do is just look at that the area that he was in and realize the fact that he was a person of color. But we're not worshiping the color. The color and we're not worshiping it's the spirit. The there you go. We're worshiping the Son of God that was incarnate in the flesh. Amen. So praise God. If we can ever get people to pass that color thing, mm -hmm. white, black, whatever, if we get them past the color thing, then they begin to understand that this is a spiritual relationship sure with will. God, and that's it's what's going to take us through. Yep, this is a spiritual. This is definitely a spiritual thing. A Amen. spirit in a, a, a spirit in a physical body. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Having these 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 human experiences. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. No matter how hard the spirit wants to do right, mm -hmm. what he say in, in, in Romans 7, why do I do the things that I don't want to do? Yeah, it's a struggle. Because that's not you. Yeah, it's a struggle. It's, it's the, it, it, is, it is your flesh. Right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, it's a struggle because you got the five uh, sensations, what you see, smell, taste, hear, and feel. And if you don't taken you don't discipline them then how could you ever walk in spirit and mind that's exactly what it is you know that's why you know bible says we walk in the spirit so that we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh right so once you become of the new birth and you receive the spirit of god that's a divine nature that has been attached to your spirit man but mm -hmm. the thing is it takes a long time and no matter how long you've been doing it, you still never get it completely right. Sure. But it takes a long time to get used to having the Spirit of God living in you, because that's exactly what's happening. Used to guiding, right, used right. Used to listening to. Yeah, him, we are. You we know, are so used to this physical world, this physical world, and the physical senses, right. and like you said, what the, we see, the five senses, what we smell, smell touch, taste, hear, hear and feel, and all those things. Right. So we have a hard time yielding to the Spirit of God. But the Spirit of God, if we can learn to just Discipline. Deal to the Spirit of God. Discipline. Deal be to the Spirit of God. That's discipline. Yeah, discipline. That's it. That's it. Get in there. That is discipline. You no know. doubt about it. Amen. Praise the Lord. No doubt about it. Yeah, uh, that's what we have to do. We have to learn to discipline our mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what he gave me when I was in prison. He had gave me the, the illustration in my mind. It was like, and I had to write about it, right? right. You know, and uh, it's 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 we like I say we've been so used to walking in this earthly realm, and when it come time to chastise and discipline the flesh, 
It's a battle. It's a battle. It's a battle. And I will, uh, I'll tell you what, it's uh takes a lot of fasting and a lot of prayer. Right. And uh, even then it's still a struggle. Right. Because I, you know, you can be in the spirit and you can pray for hours at a Man time. I can drift. And your mind's still going to drift. So, yeah, that's still going to drift. Then you got to get back. You know, right. Still that's why drift. you got to. That's, yeah. why, that's the, important, that's the yeah. importance of meditation. Right. Right. right, Meditation is when you put your candle on the end right. of your nose. Right. And it tried to one off to another thought, you got to bring it. You bring back. it right back. And if you practice that, mm -hmm. at least five to 15 minutes a day. Second Corinthians 10.5. It talks about bringing every thought in obedience to Christ. So whenever you have a thought, no matter what you're doing, if it don't line up with the teachings of Christ, we need to bring our thoughts back where they align with the teachings of Jesus Christ. So that's how we get our mind back in, on, on focus. Because it'll drift. It, it will drift. In, uh, you know, you can be at church and having a good time, and all of a sudden your mind going somewhere else. Sure yep. sure so wheels. that's something we have to work on and Ooh, this 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 fleshly body. Yeah, it's something else. It's something else. It's all about discipline. So. But uh, we're going to end this now, and uh, I, I thank whoever's there that was there. Uh, thank you for listening. And uh, like I say, check out the show. We will be airing it on TV as well. Uh, KB Production. We will be airing it on KB Production on Roku. So Amen. check us out. Amen.